Hello, everybody. It is Matty Ice, finally back after about a four-month break of no videos ever since me and Baltor create, helped create that amazing Mario Superstar Baseball net play history video. And, of course, I'm back with the goat. There's Bella. Still as cute as ever. And this video is going to be different from all my, all my other videos. Um, as you can see, I have gameplay footage of a very... <laughs> Very old series of videos on my YouTube channel where I did a Let's Play of Mario Superstar Baseball back in high school. I believe this was around nine years ago in 2013. So enjoy this very poor, you know, the Dazzle capture cards back in the day. I went to Igley's house or Duro's house, as some of you may know. We were friends in high school and he had a Dazzle. So this is how this abomination got created. This is me playing challenge mode as the Bowser team. So uh, yeah, this video, it's basically going to be me explaining why Mario Superstar Baseball means so much to me, all the different occurrences I've had in my history with the game. And of course, as usual, it all starts with, I think, a lot of other people. Where back in 2005, the game first came out. Of course, I loved the GameCube as, GameCube as a kid. And I had all the other Mario games. I had Double Dash, I had the Mario Parties, Melee, Mario Tennis... And then this game came out, and for those of you that don't know, baseball is probably the most impactful sport in my life. It's pretty much my whole career revolves around it, my free time revolves around it, and obviously with Mario Superstar Baseball being baseball, it also revolves around it. So when I heard that my favorite and favorite video game franchise, Mario, and my favorite sport was coming together because you know, Mario Baseball wasn't on Nintendo 64 like tennis and golf. I was like, wow, this is awesome. So this is around 2005. I remember I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida, but I drew my family had to go to Lakeland. And my aunts, she actually got me the game. We went to Walmart together. And it was, I don't know the exact date, but it was around when it first came out. We got the game. And the reason why we had to go to Lakeland is because both of my sets of my grandparents, my mom, my mom's side and my dad's side, they both lived in Lakeland. Well, back in 2005, my dad's father, I called him my granddad, he was having some health problems and he was actually in the hospital. Now, I was fairly, I mean, not too young, but I was still definitely a kid. Uh, my parents, they didn't want me to go see him in the hospital because I think I was around nine years old at the time. Um, they just left me with my mom's side of their parents, so my, my other grandparents, and it was them and my aunts. So basically, Mario Superstar Baseball, I, like, I brought my GameCube from my house, and I was, just, I was at my grandparents' house for a few days while my, my parents were looking after my dad's dad in the hospital. So that this is the game I was playing. I was, I'd play through challenge mode. And I remember I'd always pick the Yoshi team because Yoshi's my favorite character. Or at least he was as a kid, and I still like him a lot now. And I'd pick Yoshi, and I'd just do challenge mode over and over again. I was so fascinated with the star mission system of just, like, trying to do all these little different challenges that each character has to unlock a superstar form of them. I thought it was just so cool, so it's replayable. And even as a kid, I just like, wow, this is fun. And all the different stadiums and, and the little mini-map, I love the challenge mode mini map. I think it's so a little creative. It's not too big, not not too small. It's you know, it's it's a cool little novelty, and I just loved it a lot. So, so back then, um, I was playing that. Grandparents taking care of me, and then eventually, my parents would come over. They told me that my granddad died, and I was pretty young at the time. And you know, you're not sure how to process information like that. But um, regardless, playing Mario Superstar Baseball and having this game to kind of help me get through that, it meant a lot to me. And I am couldn't think of any other better game than combining my favorite video game character and my favorite sport together to help me get through something that... that after looking back on it, it's like I can reflect on it's like, wow, this you know, this game meant a lot to me even back then. So um obviously that's that was a long time ago. But um it's definitely sad to think back about uh, think back on it. I loved my granddad very much. I didn't have too many memories of him just because it was fairly young. 
or when I was fairly young, but I do remember some things and it's very sad looking back on it. But I'm I'm glad this game did help me get through it. So since then, I guess just go through the years of like my other childhood going through middle school and um, early beginnings of high school. I, I still played the game off and on. I didn't really have any friends. Well, I, I had friends. I had friends as a kid. But they didn't really like Mario Baseball. So a lot of my time was just playing challenge mode over and over again, like I said earlier. The very few times we would play, um, it'd just be like on Toy Field. Nothing too serious. I remember one of my friends, he'd always use Yellow Shy Guy Pitcher against me. And I hated it because Yellow Shy, like, I guess any color Shy Guy, but his windup, if y'all should know, he jumps really high in the air and it's such a high releasing point. It's like, I couldn't hit the pitch. It's like, I couldn't guess. It's like, okay, is he throwing it left? He's throwing it right. As a kid, I was like, I, I was a kid, I was frustrated because I couldn't hit it. But basically playing Mario Baseball off and on as a kid, doing the challenge mode, getting all the stars. Then eventually high school came around. And around middle school into high school was the time where I was watching a lot of YouTube. And I loved I loved watching Let's Players. I pretty much had a few Let's Players I watched a lot back then. Um, Sonic Dude, now known as Ant Dude, he's more, more of a reviewer now. Chugga Conroy, obviously. And then, like, Slim Kirby and then the kind of other people in that group. But mainly Shadow Mario 41. He was the first one to do, like, a big let's play on Mario Superstar Baseball. And I watched it. I was like, wow, I loved the format he was doing this. He was going through every every different challenge mode difficulty with all the different characters. And I found it really fun. I really enjoyed his videos. So then flash for, or fast forward around my junior year of high school... At the time, I was a Let's Player for about two years, and I finally saw, you know what, I want to do Mario Superstar Baseball, because at that point, I think he just ended his Let's Play. I didn't want to, <laughs> it's so stupid of me thinking back, you know, my channel with like barely over 100 subscribers, and he's like a pretty big time LP here with thousands of, thousands of subscribers. I was like, oh, well, I don't want to start it while well, his, his style isn't finished, because I was like, I don't want to take away from his views, but that's just, you know, silly youthful thinking. But I start so I do the let's play. I modeled it very similar to his let's play. Okay, kind of the same format and all that. And in 2013, nine years ago, it's crazy to think back on the video footage you're seeing now is uh, my Mario Superstar Baseball let's play. And this is so at the time the game's been out for eight years, and I've I feel like I've had a pretty good understanding of the game and like how all the different characters work. So I played through every challenge mode level with all the different characters. And I had a blast because back then I was really interested in doing broadcast commentary for like sports. I was like, okay, well, I can do this to like, because it's like, okay, I'm playing Mario Baseball, but it's like I'm actually broadcasting an actual Mario Baseball game, doing a Let's Play and commentating over it. So this is kind of me like using as practice to develop speaking and talking in front of a crowd, so sort of, so to say. And, you know, I'd, whenever I'd hit a gap or to, to the outfield, be like, oh, extra bases, the runners rounding, blah, 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 you know, standard broadcasting stuff. And that Let's Play was honestly probably one of my favorite Let's Plays I've ever done. I haven't done a Let's Play in, I don't know how long, maybe maybe freshman year of college, might be pushing it. But yeah, basically, I uh, played Mario Baseball. And one thing also to go about me is that when I played this game, I despised the power characters. I refused to pick any power characters because I thought they were cheap. I thought it was boring to hit home runs. You know, it, you think it, the thing that's a weird thing to think is all the kids like love home runs. You know, that's the like the one exciting thing in baseball. But for me, I was fascinated with like just going for charge swings with like balanced characters and just any other character type besides power, just like aiming for gappers and like trying to get doubles. And, you know, since the CPU never sprints in the outfield, you can get triples sometimes. So I love just picking those characters and just going for doubles and trying to score as many runs as I could against the CPU and exhibition mode, stuff like that. And eventually this led to the Matty Ice, well, I wasn't Matty Ice back then when I was a kid, but the, the Matty Ice all-star team, whereas like I had Yoshi lead off and then, <laughs> then batting second, it was Diddy Kong. And then batting third, it was Mario. And then batting fourth, Birdo. Batting fifth, Boo. And then I had Shy Guy. Uh, Monty Mole, Toad. And then Luigi. That was the last one. Luigi is my right fielder. So my lineup was 
Boo Pitcher. So I did know that back in the day. I had a feeling about Boo. So I had Boo Pitcher. I had uh, Shy Guy Catcher, which is very bad if you think of today's meta. Monty Mole first base. Yoshi second base. I loved Yoshi at second base. I was a kid. Is his tongue catch would just like catch everything. I always thought it was so good. I'd have Mario shortstop because a lot of times I'd make Mario my captain. You know, old like mid two thousands baseball thinking. It's like okay, you're the captain of your team. It's like it's easier shortstop, but like Derek Jeter or so to say. Like okay, Mario's got to play shortstop. And then Birdo is my third baseman. Left field I had Toad. Uh, center field I had Diddy Kong, and right field I had Luigi. Because in in the opening cutscene you, you see Luigi play right field and he like jumps off the wall and makes the catch but I didn't know wall jump was a thing back then so that was my team and I always played with that team the most because I thought it gave me the most fun obviously characters not in meta positions mostly and you know not having any power hitters but that's what I didn't like so eventually this goes into later of my 2010s uh, going to college just I wouldn't play the game that much because I know when to play it again so then eventually you know New games come out. I'm more busy when I grow older with school, less time, and there's just other games I'd rather play. So I, Mario Baseball, I always loved it. I always knew things about it, but it wasn't on top of my mind. And then the year 2020 hits. At this time, I'm already done with college. I'm a couple years into working with the Rays, and then COVID happens. And at this point, I'm doing a very different job. I was doing security for the Tampa Bay Rays, and I was in a... I was like, I would, I'd watch the security cameras for Tropicana Field. And what I would do is eventually, because I'd listen to podcasts to help like listen to something while I watch cameras. And eventually I was like, okay, what if I go back to like my old Let's Play videos? So then eventually, I, while I was watching my old Let's Play videos, I started with my Mario Party Let's Play. I was just listening to that to hear like how weird and young my voice sounded and how like cringe the comments I would say when I would talk about whatever. So I got to start with Mario Party. Then went to Mario Golf. That was my second Let's Play I did. And this led me to thinking, because I knew about speedrunning for a good bit. I was like, man, this speedrun, I wonder what that's like. Because I another thing, I love Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. It's probably my second favorite Mario sports game is Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. And I was thinking, well, actually, my, Mario Golf Toadstool Tour might have been my favorite back then before I discovered the Mario Baseball community. Is I just loved. It. I thought it was amazing. The courses were fun. The mechanics of how much you you could control your shot. Loved Mario Golf. So then this led me into looking up the speed run, and I was like, okay, I'll do like I'll do like the ring shot mode because that you know it's like a standard category. I feel like just do like a ring shot of like whatever course, how many rings there were, or ring levels for each course, and I would just do that. So I looked it up, and I'm watching the gameplay, and I'm like, this isn't fun. Because all, all the speedruns were doing, it's like, because the holes, they have like a preset different hole locations and whatnot and somewhat standard wind speeds. I'm like, okay, these guys like aren't even lining up their shots, which makes sense. You know, it's a speedrun. Why waste your time pressing the X button to get a zoom in on your shot, making sure you're landing wherever you need to? They just remember like which club to use, how hard to hit the ball, and they never look to line up their shots. And, and it always worked for them. Like, they'd get the ball in the hole so easily. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm not doing this. This isn't fun. I'm not trying to memorize like multiple 18 hole golf courses and for each hole, for each shot in that hole, like what club to use, how hard to hit it. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. And then this led me to thinking, okay, but what other Mario sports games are there that maybe I could do a speed run? And then I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of strikers. I'm like, okay, well, that kind of seems boring because it's, because there's no, it's a it's a timed match when you go through the the cups in Mario Strikers. It's like five minute matches. I think you can even edit the time length. So I don't know how that ruling worked out. So I was like, okay, well, it seemed pretty boring because all you do is you just score one goal and then like never score. So that goal cutscenes wouldn't happen. So I was like, okay, Mario Strikers won't work out. And then I'm thinking of Mario Baseball. I'm like, okay, well, I do like Mario Baseball a lot. Obviously, I did the Let's Play. I'm like, you know what? Let me look into the, the speed run. So I, I look up the world record for Mushroom Many Percent, and I'm watching the strategy. First off, shout-outs, Blitzorama, one of the pioneers of the Mario Superstar Baseball speed run, speed running, and the strats he was using, it was very ahead of its time. He had, very obviously, you know, you copy from the world record to, like, try to improve what they did. But he had a lot of good stuff figured out. I was like, wow, this guy's good. But I'm watching it, 
And I'm like, okay, all this guy's doing is he's scoring one run, and then he's just bunting himself out. I'm like, okay, well, that seems pretty easy enough. You know, you score one run, then bunt out for the rest of the three innings. But then on the final Bowser game, since it's a five-inning game in the mushroom difficulty, you have to go for a 10-run mercy. So I'm like, okay, so I guess that's where the run gets hard. So I was like, you know what? I've streamed a little bit before. Like, let me try it. I'll do some, I'll stream my speed runs. And so I'm just doing it. I'm thinking, like, this is the coolest thing ever is I'm, like, getting Wario leadoff into Waluigi star swing into, like, three sack bunts in a row to, like, score one run and get out of the inning. I'm like, wow, okay, I can do this because <laughs> it's so easy. You know, you just score a run, you lay down bunts, and you're out of there. And eventually, I think around, you know, it's funny. The trivia question at the after party, I got wrong of how many runs in like in the thousandth digit. What was the number? I didn't know it was five. I didn't even know my own question. But I always remember my uh, my first world record I got, how many attempts I t- it took. And I believe it was, I believe it was maybe 90 around there. But I just remember it because it's like, it didn't take me that long. It maybe took me like two days of recording or two days of just streaming something like that and i'm like and i got the world record and you know i'm with my my rivals of ether friends and i'm popping off like i just got a world record in a video game like let's go this is sick and they're all like celebrating with me so then i'm like i'm super invested in the speed run and i'm trying to get i eventually try to get lower times but then again i'm just kind of thinking about i was like what if there's more to mario superstar baseball besides like speed running it and then eventually I Google, or I don't Google, but I, I go on YouTube and I just type in Mario Superstar Baseball. Then I'm like, I'm scrolling, and, then I, I'll, and then I was watching video reviews because like those are the first things that pops up. And I'm like, okay, what are these people saying about Mario Baseball? So I'd watch a few reviews, and eventually I go down and I see Mario Superstar Baseball tier list, like very outdated, pretty old, but it had a lot of views. I'm like, and it's from Mario Superstar Baseball Club. And for those of you that don't, that don't know, that was the original name of Dinger City. I watch it. I'm like, wow, this is like kind of cool. There's like a competitive meta. And I'm like seeing like what they think with the characters and how it lined up with me as a kid of what characters I thought were good or not. So then eventually I watch, then I then go to their channel and I watch, I start, I think, I think I started in season six. I watched some of them game, some of their games. And eventually I joined the discord and I'm like, Hey, and this is the time where the discord, very few members. It might've, I might've joined before, a couple hundred i'm not sure but i was i'm definitely one of the more ogs in the community so i joined and they're like hey how'd you find us i'm like oh all i did was go on youtube and i searched mario superstar baseball and your tier list video showed up and they're like that's awesome so ever since then i got into watching their competitive games because back then net play wasn't really a thing we didn't have online matches against each other so i just watched them and i learned the meta through their videos i learned about all the one one well at I knew about the one star line drive back in high school th- through Shadow Mario 41 because he actually knew that he was kind of sort of ahead of his time back then. So I knew that. They're like, oh, yeah, Paratroop is good. We like Dry Bones and Bowser is obviously the best. But I remember I was going, I'm like, well, this is my all star lineup I use. And I'd be like, okay, here's my lineup where it's just like no power hitters and Monty Mole at first base and Shy Guy Catcher. And, I, and I've, obviously I got like, oh, that's not really good, you know, six IQ kind of thing. And then my first net play game I ever played was against Tom G, also known as Dr. Winkley now. And I played him and he beat me. And then I think I beat him the next game in like a stars on game with like my team. Then eventually I was like, okay, I'll just draft like a meta team. Because I was so insistent with my with my team I played as a kid. But eventually I got I was getting destroyed. And then during the same time, I was still speedrunning the game trying to get a better record and i'd lowered my record a couple times and then cactus he actually speed ran the game before me like years ago but then like he stopped doing it and then he saw i was doing it and i was kind of like revitalizing the mario superstar baseball speed run and eventually he got a run where he took my old record and i remember i was like i was so upset about it because it's like it's something i put so much time into i was like okay well i just got to get it back and it took me a long time. It took me thousands of attempts to get that record back. And there was two, at least two times, maybe three times, I was on the final Bowser game where I was on world record pace, but I couldn't get the 10 runs. I got three outs because 
both times Yoshi would line out to the shortstop on perfect contact. I'm like, come on. I remember just being so disheartened about it. And eventually I got the world record. It still stands today. And, you know, the pop where it's like, that's that's my mother world record, bitch. That's mine. And I'm like, I'm popping off about it. And then ever since then, I then I then tried to speed run some more, tried out trying out some new strats that me and Cactus had theorized. But then eventually after a couple months, my interest with the speed run died down because that was when net play was starting to become big. Because this is when um golf mode, the original golf mode was starting to become a thing. I'm like, okay, it's more fun to play against other people and like talk with them and play than and and sure streaming's fun and like having a, a little chat audience, but I just found more fun playing against other people. So then that's what I did. And I pretty much grinded Mario Baseball in the summer. Um, when I didn't have to work for the Rays um, on off road trips, I would just play Mario Baseball on ranked, grinding, asking for any games. And eventually I became a really good player. And I eventually won a Netplay Superstars champion, Championship. And me and Cactus ended up being. Uh, to the top people but um it just joining finding i guess it just kind of makes me crazy to think that okay if COVID never happened and you know i'm still doing regular clubhouse stuff with the rays and i didn't have to do security for one year it's like what if that never happened because if i'm not doing security i'm probably not super bored at work it's being like oh let me just listen to my old let's play videos and then that doesn't give me the thought of, oh, hey, wonder if there's like a speed run of one of these Mario sports games I can do. And then that leads into, hey, I wonder if there's like people talking about Mario Superstar Baseball. And then that leads to the Discord and the community. So it's kind of just crazy looking back at such something that you wouldn't think is such a big the deal or thing to happen in your life. It's like, okay, I, I have to do something else for a year for my job. But then that led into something that became so important for me in my life which is Mario Superstar Baseball. And it's just super cool thing about, because I've, through that, I have so many good friends who are obviously a couple of my closest, Dennis from Dinger City. Um, he's awesome. And I always looked up to him because when I started watching uh, Dinger City in season six, he was always the best player. He was always winning pretty much every game. He was the one seed. I was like, I want to be good like that guy. Because this is coming from other competitive experience in the past I had with Melee and Rivals of Ether. I was a very, very good player in Rivals of Ether. I was like, okay, I want to be the best, one of the best in Mario Superstar Baseball. So being able to meet Dennis in person just recently, like a th- pretty much a month ago now, was was awesome. But other people in the community, um, obviously Cactus, you know, the speedrunning rivals. We've always had good interactions with each other in voice calls. Little Cokes, love Little Cokes, Daddy Cokes. Cokes is the goat. Love him. Me, him, and Dennis have had multiple times where we would just take a few hours and just talk about the game, what we think about the game, and the meta, and all that. And then shouts to Neil. Um, I'm not sure if he'll be watching this, but Neil, he's not too active in Mario Baseball anymore. But back in the summer of 2021, he was super active. And I remember he just always joined VCs. And he, Neil is my biggest fan. I love Neil. And me and him would talk about Mari baseball. And then there's there's just so many other people in the community. But but, but back in that summer where I was the most I was at my most active with Mari Superstar Baseball, it was just awesome being in such a tight knit group back when the community wasn't as big. There's people I could join a VC and talk about the game, play the game, and it was very cool. And then eventually the um the scene got bigger other people made youtube videos showcasing the game and the community got really big and more people started to join and this is when i was starting to become a little less active because work's coming back up and spring training was happening for major league baseball and with spring training you pretty much have to work every day so i pretty much had no time to play and a lot of new people were coming in a lot of new good players are coming and it was it was cool to see but at the same time, it's like, man, I, I sort of wish like the close knit group of friends I had. So now everything just so expands so big. But then this eventually led to me thinking, you know what? Let me let me try because this is back when I started doing my 
I started doing YouTube videos back in late 2021, I would make meta videos where I was talking about, oh, hey, here's a, here's my tier list, or here's how you can draft your team to like have a meta team and stuff like <laughs> me discovering the slice swing with solar flare. I did a, a slice swing tutorial. So all those Mario Superstar baseball videos, but, and obviously you guys don't know, I'm not very good with video editing, not good with computers in general. So my videos are very super one take, not much editing, very basic. So, so I had this idea where I want to make a Mario Superstar Baseball net play history. Because for me, I was around since the beginning, or pretty much almost since the beginning of net play in the competitive scene. So who better to make a video or at least provide the information than me since I was there since the beginning? So I was like, okay, I want to do this. And eventually when I literally thought of that, I kid you guys not, I was so close to just getting on my computer chair like I'm doing for this video and just like no scripts, just like, rambling whatever comes to my mind of okay well this is what happened in mario superstar baseball this is the first tournament fanners won it and then going off from there it was going to be super bad but eventually but then i was thinking about okay well let me actually sit down and first go to google slides love google slides and just start making slides of each net play superstars tournament talking about whatever important stuff happened throughout the year and then eventually i was like you know what because this is when baltor oh shouts baltor great friend of mine love him um, he was doing, making these little short Mario baseball, like sketch videos. And I thought they're really good. I'm like, wow, this guy's content's really good. I want his help because he has tons of experience, like his own podcasts and just creating videos. He knows his way around video creation. So I was like, Hey, I think we should make this Mario Superstar baseball net play video or the history of it. I think it'd be really good. It'd be really cool. And I think it's important for the community to have. Because this was right after those two videos came out, and the, and the community was booming. So many people were joining, but they don't know what happened in the past year of the history of that NetPlace happened. I'm like, I think this is important. That way people can catch up on it. There's this video they can watch and be like, okay, this is what happened before we joined the Discord. And so thankfully, graciously, he agreed to do it. He put tons of time into it, and I can't thank him enough for making that video because... That was the one video I wanted on my channel where it's like, okay, this is going to be the video that I can go back on and be like, wow, I spent tons of hours looking up this information. Baltor spent tons of hours editing the audio and video clips I was sending him into making such a, a great video. I was like, this is the one video I want on my channel to be like, this is, this is going to be the highest quality video ever. Because personally, I just don't have enough time to get into video editing, stuff like that. So this is why the videos I make like this, or it's a bunch of one takes, all of me rambling, whatever's on my mind. It's just, I don't have the time to invest to uh, learning more. But that was the one video I wanted. And I remember in the, within like 24 hours, it broke a thousand views. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like to, for people to sit down and watch an hour, 45 minute, basically a movie, if you think about it, of people wanting to know the history of Mars Superstar Baseball. It's like, I left an impact on this community. It's like, sure, I have the world record for speed running. Sure, I was the number one player on net play for a time when I was I finished number one on the leaderboard. Sure, I won a net play superstar championship. But it's like this is a video where it's like, wow, like I did something this cool and important for the community. And I think after making that video it helped me mature more as like a community member because obviously when you're really good at a game um it can be hard to be hump to be very humbling you know I, I think this goes to like top athletes too a lot of athletes aren't necessarily humbled but um after making that video it definitely put a definitely let me see things differently it's like okay i need to stop acting like a villain and being like oh your opinion sucks blah 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 uh why would someone like why would you ever do that and be like, oh, and then like if I beat someone, be like, oh, I beat you. And just it just not being a cool person, honestly. And looking back on it for 2021 when I was now, don't get me wrong, I was never disrespectful in a way of like I hated people. Like that was never the case. It's just I, I was cocky. I, I was a I was a person that people love to hate, which which can be good for a community. It's always good to have a villain. But it's kind of started to get to me. It's like, okay, well, I don't want to be a guy that people don't like. So I think after making that video, it kind of let me be a bit more, bit, bit more mature. Because, you know, I had the famous of like, oh, this character should never sniff the field. 
And I basically come to the point where if someone likes a character and if they want to play them wherever, it's like, okay, yeah, that's that's cool. Like I could see their understanding. If it works for them, great. Because at the end of the day, Mario Superstar Baseball is about sure there's uh there sure there's a broad range of the meta of like these characters are good, you should pick them. But if people are good with characters, just let don't judge them for what they pick, honestly. It's if they're good with them, they can make it work. At the end of the day, it's throwing a baseball, it's hitting a baseball, and it's catching a baseball, like fielding a baseball. Like a lot of characters can just stand in the outfield, catch a pop flop. If someone's comfortable with their singles bat, then sure, let, let them play with them. So that's basically that video is important. Made me less of a dick, in my opinion. Let me be a bit more mature. It's where I'm. I feel like I'm not that hateful of a person anymore. So and then going into that, this is. Pretty much the spring's over now that that video happened. Tons of new players are playing like crazy, getting high into the ranks, uh, like Krazy, Hell's Hero. They were the two players back in late 2021 and early 2022. They were just like dominating net play, and they really pushed it. So then eventually this all rolls around to around the summer or beginning of summertime, late spring, where Dinger City has a meetup. And thankfully... It's the trip was planned or the meetup was scheduled on a date where the Rays didn't, did not have a home game. I was able to go. I was talking to Dennis. I was like, hey, would you actually be willing to house me? And he said, of course. And so I was like, okay, we're, I'm going to make a big thing out of it because it was a long road stretch for the Rays. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to show up Monday, the Monday before the meetup. So I'll be there for like a week. So I get there. The Rays finish a, a long home stand. I'm like, finally, I can look forward to the to this to this meetup and finally get to meet the people I've talked to about Mario's superstar baseball for like over, over a year now. And I get there, Dan's fixing up from the airport. I'm so happy to see him. And, but he's just looking at me and he just seems so upset. And like, I could tell he was, he didn't want to tell me this. Like it, it was painful for him. Cause he knew how much this meant, meant to me. He was like, Hey, a couple of guys in the house got COVID we're not going to be able to record because pretty much the whole point of me coming early was to do like a whole two recording dates with them, do a live stream with them, um, do commentary for them for their, their week games for their season nine. And I'm just in the car and I'm like, yeah, I was obviously like, yeah, it sucks. Like I'm kind of just blind, blindsided by this. Like, wow, that's, you know, that, that could pretty much ruin my, my, my trip, honestly, knowing I basically came early for no reason. But, um, I just, I got through it, and, you know, I hung out with Dennis, and it, it was fine. It was fun. Then finally, the meetup day came, and I wasn't playing a lot of Mario Baseball throughout the week because Dennis never wanted to play me because Dennis never wants to play Mario Baseball, <laughs> which just, I'm just joking, Dennis. But, um, so the meetup comes, and there's a tournament. I'm looking at the seeds. I'm like, okay, Dennis is the one seed. That's standard. You know, he's one of the best land players ever because he plays on Dingerson. He's always been the best in that group. And then Cactus was the two seed. And then I was originally the three seed. And then Jason was the four seed. And Joey was the five seed. But then, but then they switched it because they didn't want Jason and Joey playing each other. So then I got knocked down to the four seed. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I was, like, originally, like, the guy. Like, the Mario Superstar Baseball guy. You know, I could never enter many net, net play tournaments because they fell on Rays games. So I only entered two Net play superstars and I I didn't win one because I got knocked out of like fifth place because of two Yoshi bobbles. And then the other one I, I won. But I dominated ranked for the entire summer. I had such a great record and I was the number one player. And I'm like, have I really fallen this far as like a player to where it's like I mean, don't get me wrong, a four seed's still a very high seed. But it's like I it's like I used to be the guy. So I was like, okay. But I so I Deep down, I thought, okay, well, I want to prove them wrong because I think I'm very good. But going into this goes back to where I was of either going going into any tournament, I'd be like, okay, I just let's just hope I get at least like 25th. I just hope I I don't go don't go in and just lose and be immediately done. So that's what I sort of tell myself jokingly. But deep down, seriously, I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform when I travel out of state to these where I'm spending a lot of money investing. Obviously, this tournament didn't have much money on the line. It was just a hundred bucks or whatever but still you know it's a big deal you know it's a lot of investment i invest a lot of money to come here and i want to put on i want to make sure i do well so i play 
play my first match. Mercy the guy. I forgot his name, but honestly, he wasn't a bad player. Even though it was, even though it was a mercy within a few innings, he was he had a very solid understanding of the game. Then my second match was against Baltor, which you all know. That game went down, arguably the game of the tournament. Paratrooper crazy catch, Baltor getting a slice on my DK star pitch, or maybe it might have been a different character star, or it was the Bowser star pitch. He did a DK banana slice on the Bowser bullet ball pitch. Crowd was hype. Everyone enjoyed it. And after that tournament, I was like, okay, I really need to focus. Because don't get me wrong, Baltor's a great player. Like, he obviously won a net play Superstars championship for a reason, regardless of, you know, how I joke about how it was Mickey Mouse. But this is a guy, like, I beat over 20 times, and I only lost two once. I'm like, okay, I need to really focus. And since then, played Thanners, uh, ninth inning, Spiritual Mercy, and then played Dennis, and then beat him 7-1, pitched great. And then play Cactus, and that was the best Mario baseball ever played. And then I was like, when I won, I was like, man, like this is, I was, I felt accomplished, you know, because I can always go back and say this was the first premier big time Mario Superstar Baseball local event, and it'll forever be that Matty Ice won it. And I, th- I thought it kind of brought things full circle because. Because I started off as like a new player thinking I was the best. You know, everyone thinks that when they join a new community. They're like, oh, I played this game all the time as a kid. I, I'm really good. And then I played Dr. Winkley in a couple of netplay games, and he, and he shows me the business. It's like, okay, that, that was a slap to the face. But um, but then winning that tournament, it kind of went back full circle where it was like, okay, you know, I can go back and say I'm one of the greatest Mario baseball players of all time, whether it's through the speed run, whether it's through the netplay community, I can say I'm one of the best. And going back to that meetup, it was just really cool to meet everyone. People I get to meet in person. Obviously, Dennis, the rest of the Dinger City people, um, Little Cokes, PK Kirby, um, Thanners, just T-Bling. T-Bling's such a nice guy. Um, just all these people I knew through net, that, that were OG Netplay guys, OG Mario Superstar Baseball Discord members. It's like wow, this is really cool. So I brought my my Mario baseball game case, which you may be able, it may be able to see right here on my shelf. Has signatures on. You probably won't be able to see with the glare, but different signatures of all the different people I had sign it. I had all the Dinger City members sign it. Then all the people there that I considered my close friends, people that were OGs back in late 2020 and 2021 of the Discord. And you know, it's it's a nice memory that that I'll have with that game case. So overall. The meetup was awesome, and me winning the tournament was fantastic. So then, uh, flash forward ahead, almost a month, basically three weeks. My this and this is where I talk about how my life with Mario Superstar Baseball it, it becomes full circle, where my grandfather on my mom's side, he's having health problems. He's having health problems for the past past like few months. And he's in the hospital. This is around uh, early July, late June. And so pretty much my mom picked me up from the Orlando airport. But she was like, oh, I got to go to the hospital because your grandfather is there. And this is the first time he had to be admitted into ICU, which obviously is very serious, you know, intensive care. And so she was there for pretty much a week, two weeks. And... Eventually, it came to the point where, you know, he's not making, like, he was pretty much going to die. The doctors told him that he probably just had months left to live. And obviously, you know, he's my grandfather, and, you know, I'm much more mature now. I'm in my 20s, and it's okay. It's like, okay, I have more memories of my grandfather, and I spent time with him. And it's like, if he, if he dies, it's like, this is something that's, and impactful so eventually it comes to the point where i get a phone call just leaving work they're like hey um your grandfather he i know i know this is probably weird but i just want to share like my whole history with the game and how it correlates with my life because this this does correlate in a way so i know it's getting a little maybe emotional but i just want to talk about it to where they said, hey, you know, he's decided he wants to be left off. He wants to get off the machines and he wants to he wants to pass soon. 
and obviously this hits me pretty hard. And at this point, there was a stretch for a few days um, in late June, early July. I was just off Discord. Um, I wasn't active on Discord at all. Um, if people were to reach out to me, I basically gave them short responses. And, I, and I'd say, hey, I, I don't want to talk any further. Um, I just I don't have time right now. Something's going on. And I don't want to say what it is. Obviously, I'm saying it now because time has passed and I've been more comfortable with it. And it's like, just please respect it. I don't want to talk. And so a few days of me not being act active in Discord. And then eventually my grandfather died. And a few days later, on July July 1st, was was his funeral. So obviously that just recently happened, just a little, little over a week ago. And I said goodbye to him, and it's it sucked. Like I I cried, and I know it was just a very emotional thing that my entire family had to go through. Um, and this is at the time I'm trying to move out to into Igley's house. As as you can see, I'm in Igley's old room. This is now my new room. Um, I live here now, which is awesome. But yeah, it just it just goes full circle because I first played Mario Superstar Baseball when my dad's dad was dying. And this is the game that got me through it as a little kid when I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know any better better. I was like, okay, my grandfather's in the hospital. I'm I'm sure I'll see him again. And obviously that's that's not the case. I wasn't able to see him again. So the first time our Superstar Baseball came out, my first grandfather died. And then now, you know, like almost 20 years later, basically 17 to 18 years later, my other grandfather died. And this was right after I went to Long Island, met all the people I I spent so much time talking to in Discord and messaging and seeing them in person and you know winning the first land tournament it's it's like okay I won this and then when I came back just a couple weeks later my other grandfather dies and it just kind of completes so I guess sort of my life story with the game so far to where I first played the game when he died or when my one grandfather died and now I come home as a champion as one of the best Mario Superstar Baseball players ever. You know, the game's almost been out for almost 20 years now. And I've played the game my whole life, and now I'm, you know, I'm one of the best, if not the best, to do it in all facets of the game. You know, it's it's just kind of just, I guess, crazy to think about, like how just, I guess the coincidence, I don't know, my first one, my first grandfather dies, and then my other one dies, and it's like that, just how the time matches up. It's just kind of crazy and weird to think about. And then the the one Dinger City members tournament had just passed um, last night, the time I'm recording this, where I, I won that tournament too. So it's, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of rambling I'm, at this point. I, I'm sorry if you guys, but this is just how I wanted to, express my feelings what's happened through my life with the game and I just want to get this video out there because I think it was important to me to um really express the memories of how this game and how it affected my full life because you know there's a point where maybe I wouldn't be in this position talking about Mario Superstar Baseball if I wasn't doing security for the Tampa Bay Rays and doing my normal job but things happen in life for a reason and I just wanted to take this time I know it's definitely going on to be a longer video probably over 40 minutes if i had to guess at this point but yeah that's pretty much it um i don't know what other video i'll make in the future um if i were to make another video expect it to be about the meta of mario baseball there's some been some thoughts in my mind that i want to talk about in terms of like just things about the game so look forward to that probably will be it won't be soon because I'm about to be busy with work again. But, yep, yeah, let me just go ahead and get the goat once again. Bell's back. So, for me and Bella, thank you all for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed this very sort of podcasty style rambling of with very unmeta, uh, poor video quality footage of my Mario Superstar Baseball Let's Play from high school. But yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all got to know a bit more about me and how much, how much, how important this game is to me. Because this game, it might be my favorite video game of all time now after all the different things I've gone through with it in my life and that porn has been to me with other family member correlations. So yeah. So if you all took the time to watch or listen to this full video, to hear me out, to hear my story, Matty Ice's story, Mario Superstar Baseball, I greatly appreciate it. So thank you all so much for watching for me and Bella, and I will see you all for another video in the future. See you guys then.